This video is to teach you about Tyon's total breakdown technology we call TBT. As a user, the benefits of TBT or total breakdown technology is to you that you can take every suppressor apart from the end cap all the way through the mounting system. You can clean it, you can service it, uh, you can change O-rings. It makes the whole suppressor life extended. And I can tell you from many circumstances where people do stupid things that being able to replace parts is a huge deal. It's not a welded up chunk of metal that you can't do that. You can take it apart, we can take out a defective piece because it's been damaged and it can be replaced. We had a customer in West Virginia who had two of our suppressors and he reloaded. Well, long story short is he came to our facility, we had to discover why the first baffle looked like a moon crater from all the gouging in it and none of the rest of the suppressor was damaged in any way, shape or form. The net result of that was faulty reloading. The bullet, when it escaped the barrel, going down the barrel, it had been fractured uh, early on in the process and it exploded as it left the barrel, putting shrapnel into the suppressor, uh, pitting the blast baffle. The beauty of our design is it's so robust and it's eighth inch thick at that face of those baffles that we were able to just take out that baffle, change it out and get him to correct his reloading. No problems. This is a Grenadier 45 and I'm going to go through total breakdown technology so you can see how all the parts come apart. I'm going to start by taking the Nielsen device out. Now the Nielsen device encompasses four parts and we'll get back to that. Now the Grenadier suppressors have different numbers of baffles depending on which one you're looking at and that's not really important uh, by itself but all of them have a first baffle and a last baffle that are unique. All of the center baffles are interchangeable. You can move them in whatever sequence you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take apart the Nielsen device here using a 7 8 inch 12 point socket. And I slide it down over the piston nut. I grasp this and I just unscrew it. Now you can see everything here is just hand snug. There's no torquing or any kind of thing like that. I happen to use a long socket because it's easier to grab. I could put it onto a socket drive and make it faster, but I choose to do this just to show you. You don't need anything special, just a, a socket. Now what we've got here is we have an empty tube. I'm going to take off the end cap. So when you look at the parts, we have an empty tube with no obstructions. Now this is the key, when we started designing these, we had other designs we saw in the marketplace that we sold them for many years and they had of obstructions. You really couldn't get a clean tube to clean it. We wanted to have a smooth tube, easy to get in and clean. Because of our design, there's no burnt on carbon in the tube. All of the carbon that burns on from firing is limited to the blast baffle here and we have a, a shroud that goes around the Nielsen device, which I'll show you, but it interfaces to the top of the uh, baffle structure. So when you have an ignition and this flame is going through with carbon, is going through the suppressor, any carbon that comes through the piston, through the spring, through the perforations, it lands on this sleeve which then builds up on the sleeve. It does not burn in on the, uh, the tube, which makes it easy to clean. So in the end, when you're cleaning this, it's much easier. But the uh, total breakdown technology shows you that all these parts come apart. There's absolutely no additional uh, parts that stay as, as one piece. So everything's down to the, the piece part. Now for reassembling, this is going to I'm going to take the end cap and I'm going to find the end that has the flat space, which is here. And I'm going to, or the flat area right before the, the threads, it's the shelf. I'm going to thread this on. I'm just going to do it hand tight so that the, the um, O-ring draws up to the end. 
it takes more energy to turn that once the, the O-ring starts to compress. So I just get it that far. And I'm going to take my baffle stack in whatever orientation I want. And I'm just going to let gravity work for me. I turn that upside down so I can slide it in. So I'm going to take the sleeve and put it in here. Now this is where um, it's a little bit interesting in the sense that you have this titanium housing. We put our piston down in there and you'll see it notches in. We take our stainless spring, we put it in there and we have our piston nut which has two O-rings uh, and that assists in uh, several things uh, to include uh, eliminating the potential for the whipping of the suppressor for baffle strikes. It also helps retain lubricant in there in the O-rings. But um, then we're going to slide it down. I'm going to tighten it down just so it's snug. Like that. And we're going to thread it on. I get it snug so there's no crack there. And I'm going to turn it over. Tighten the end cap. It compresses the O-ring down so it makes it uh, real stiff there so it doesn't vibrate loose. Again, you're going to want to look and make sure there's a smooth transition around the edge. Nothing is stuck up higher because that would mean that the baffles are not fully engaged. But that is the final assembly. TBT allows our suppressors to have a longer life due to the ease of cleaning and parts replacement.